Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis. Welcome to episode 45. And this week I've got a technique that's mainly for those of you who like to do compositing. And it's all about how to make horizon lines that you have way in the distance look that much more realistic. You see, yet again, and it's been an example of how paying attention to the small details makes a big difference with your retouching. Okay, so just a couple of things before we dive into this week's tutorial. First one is that last week I showed how you can fake the wet look. And that's a tutorial using layer masks, smart objects, and also the plastic wrap filter to create the illusion of something being wet or having sweat on it. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And secondly, all I ask, like I do each week, is that you support this channel just by clicking on the subscribe button and also letting other people know about it. I'm really pleased with how this channel is growing at the moment, but I want it to get bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger and provide more content for you folks. So make sure you click on the subscribe button, let other people know about it. It's the support from you that helps it to grow. Have I said that enough? Click on the subscribe button. Right, let's dive into the tutorial. Okay, so like I said, this is a, a partly retouched pitch that I'm working on at the moment. It's a composite image that contains a few elements like the sky, the grassland and the rhino. And I'm just kind of building these up so it looks like the rhino's walking across the dry grasslands in Africa. Now I've got to the stage where I want to work on the horizon line. And this is what I want to show you now, how we can improve it. Because I'm not kind of happy with it at the moment. Because what we basically have, because we've cut out the grass and we've cut out the sky and put the two together, we now have a very, very straight, sharp horizon line going across way in the distance. And because our rhino stood on grass, it wouldn't be that way. We need to improve it to look as if the grass is way in the distance as well. And that's going to be really, really easy to do just using a layer mask and a brush that's built into Photoshop. So let's show you how we do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a layer mask to the layer that contains my grassland here. So here's our grass. I'm now going to add a layer mask to that at the bottom of the layers panel. And then I'm going to go over to the toolbar and I need to make sure that my foreground color is set to black. Now at the moment it's not. So to do that, I just press a D on my keyboard to go to the default colors. And then I need to press X to flip between the two. But I need to make sure that my foreground color there is black. Then I'm going to go to brushes. I'm going to press B on my keyboard or come directly to the toolbar here and just choose a normal brush and then go to the top of the screen where we have our brush options because now we can click on this down arrow to bring up all the default brushes that are built into Photoshop. And this nice sized dialog box here shows there's quite a few brushes available to us already. But these here doesn't contain the one we want to use. Over at the top right hand corner of this dialog box there's a little cog icon and when we click on that we get presented with a few options but down the bottom is where there's even more brushes available to us that we can't actually see just yet. And the one I want to use is one here called Faux Finish Brushes. And this is already built into Photoshop. And I just want to say a, a big shout out to my friend Uli Steiger, who's a digital artist over in Germany, who put me actually into using these Faux Finish Brushes here because they're great for mimicking the look of grassland or a wheat field and all that kind of stuff, which is perfect for this picture here. So huge thanks to Uli Steiger for kind of making me look a little bit deeper. So what I'll do now is add these brushes in so we can make them available to us. So we click on faux finish brushes. We get this little dialog box that comes up now saying append, cancel or OK. And I'm going to click on append, which basically means add. So when I click on append, we can now see that all these faux finish brushes have been added to the bottom. And the one we want to use is number 50, right at the very end of the list, number 50 to mimic the look of our grass. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is choose number 50. Then I'm going to go to the top of the screen and choose the brush presets to bring up the dialog box here, which is where I can start to use all these things on the left to sort of shape the brush how I want it to look. And the great thing is we have this little preview area down the bottom so we can see all the changes we make on the left reflected in real time in this box at the bottom. So what I'm going to do just by playing around with these, I'm going to go to shape dynamics. This is where I can play around with maybe size jitter. So we can vary the size of the brush strokes so they're not all the same size and that because that wouldn't look realistic we can go for a bit of angle jitter as well play around with that we can go to scattering 
so it can increase the scattering, but we don't want it to be too far spread. We need to be fairly tightly bunched because this is just going to be painted across that horizon line. Something like that's looking good. And then I'm going to go to brush tip shape. Now in here, all I'm going to do, if I just bring my cursor outside of this dialog box so you can see it, you can say if I bring the size up, you can see what the kind of brush shape is that we've got here. But it's the top of the brush that I want to use to paint along this horizon line. So what I need to do is rotate the brush 180 degrees so that the top part here is now going to be on the underside. And I can do that using this little disc. So I click on the arrow, I shall rotate it round so that the brush now is completely upside down, which means I can paint along the horizon line with this kind of fuzzy part of the brush to mimic the look of that grass. So now look, if I just close that uh, preview box down, let me go in to the horizon line. With this brush that we've set up, painting on the layer mask, I can now go along the horizon line and just remove it. because I'm painting in black to remove parts of that horizon line with the shape of that brush head. And that there gives us that fake look of the grass way, way in the distance. Much, much more realistic than it would have been if I'd left it as a straight line. So that's pretty much the effect that I wanted to show you in this video. However, I want to show you an extra little bonus tip, and that's how we can do this a lot quicker. Now we can do that by using the pen tool, a really, really simple use of the pen tool. So let's just back up just a little bit so we have our dead straight sharp horizon line back with us. And I'm gonna zoom out so we can see more of the picture. Now to make things easier, I'm gonna turn off the rhino so there's no distraction there and we can see the horizon line completely. So now I'm gonna to go to the pen tool, I'm gonna to press P on my keyboard, go to the pen tool and when we choose the pen tool, just make sure that you have it set to path. There's a few options available, shape, path or pixels, just use path. And then what I'm going to do is just zoom in a fraction just again. Uh, and also one of the little thing up here, we've got this little option here called rubber band. Definitely put a tick in that because it allows you to see a much more visual way and an easier way of using the pen tool. So what I'm going to do, in fact, let's just show you what that rubber band does is this. When I click outside of the picture, which is where we want to start, you can see now I can see where the path is going to be. If I take the tick out of the rubber band, we see nothing. It's kind of like guesswork. I don't know anybody who doesn't like to use this little tick box here called rubber band. So now that we have that, we can see where this path's going to be. I want to go all the way across the picture now, so I can't go any further at the moment. I'm going to hold down my space bar, click and drag all the way across to the far end of the picture. Here's my path and I'm going to take it right to the outside to somewhere like that. Now, when you get to the very, very end, I'll zoom out just a sec, you can see that the pen tool kind of doesn't want to let go. It wants you to keep on doing stuff. But all we want is a straight line. So to kind of tell it that that's as much as we want to do, all we need to do now is just press the escape key. So that kind of finishes it to say, right, no more paths are going to be drawn. Then we're going to go to our brush tool by pressing B. And we've already got the brush tool set up to how we want it to be to give that fake look of the grass. So now then all we do is we go to the paths tab over here on the right hand side of the screen. My my Photoshop is set up like it would be by default. So we've got layers, channels, and paths. When I click on paths, we can see now we do have this work path that we've just drawn. Now, if you wanted to deactivate it, just click anywhere in the gray area and you can see that it disappears. But we need it to be active, so we're going to click back on the thumbnail to bring up the path. And then all I'm going to do is go to the very, very bottom of the screen and the second icon, oops, second icon from the left is where it's called stroke a path. And what that's going to do, when I click on that, it's going to apply my brush stroke all the way across that path, that line that we've drawn now. So we can actually get that horizon line done very, very quickly instead of manually painting in like we did first time round. So I click on that. And now let's zoom in. I'll just turn off the, the actual path so we can see it a lot clearer by clicking in the gray. And now look, as we go across the horizon line, all that random kind of uh, brush stroke has been painted to give us the effect of that grass way, way in the distance. Let's go back to our layers now and turn on our rhino. So that's just a very, very quick way to show you how you can kind of fake that look of the grass in the distance when you're doing your composites to give that kind of horizon line uh, with a bit more added realism. And then the extra 
a thing just to how to use the path and how you can apply a brush stroke along a path. I've said path quite a bit in this tutorial, haven't I? How you can use uh, the pen tool to lay down a path to apply a brush stroke to it so you can get, get things done a lot more quicker, which in turn allows you to then get on with the stuff that you want to be doing, the more creative work. It's all about working quickly if we can and also non-destructively. But this is just a very, very simple technique for you for added realism in your composites. Okay, so in that video, there's a couple of key things that we use there, brushes and pen tool. Now, I've already created some short videos on my YouTube channel that show a little bit more about how you can use those and get a better understanding of them. The brushes one is called Three Top Tips for Cutouts and Compositing, so definitely check that one out. And also the pen tool one, which is that tool that can seem a little bit confusing when you first start trying to use it. I've done a video called The Pen Tool Made Easy. I think if you watch that, it will really kind of help you understand and get the most out out of it. Now also another big shout out to my friend Uli Steiger for kind of pointing me in the way of checking out the faux brush set that we actually used in this tutorial. If you don't know of Uli, I'm going to leave a little description, um, sorry, a link to his website in the description of this video. Definitely check it out. He's an incredible talent and an absolutely gifted instructor. Uli's also going to be one of the instructors that's joining us at Photoshop Live in Brighton in the UK coming up in July this year along with the likes of Aaron Blaze and Matt Kloskowski and many, many others. If you haven't seen or know about that event, definitely check it out and it'd be great to see you there. And finally, before I close, I think I might have mentioned this already, but make sure you click on the subscribe button. That's the only support I ask from you guys and it's the, by subscribing and that support that's helping this channel to grow. I've got so many things that I want to do with this channel to get it bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you click on the subscribe and also give me some feedback about what you'd like to see in these tutorials, maybe some more photography tips. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section or email me let me know what you want to see but let other people know about this channel as well and let's make this channel get bigger and bigger and bigger and it's more content for you guys but hey that's all for this week have a good one and i'll see you next time